Hi guys and welcome back to Miss Clark Does Science. Last time we covered the higher level topic on enzymes as part of this unit. This time we're going to finish off the whole unit by learning about the effects of temperature and pH changes on enzyme activity. So let's get straight into it. So I've got at the top here, increasing temperature equals more collisions between the substrate and enzyme, which equals optimum rate. So what does this mean? So as we increase the temperature of the, of the surrounding of the enzyme and the substrates, there will be more collisions between the two parts, and this will lead to an optimum rate. Now optimum just means the highest rate that it could be, that where it's going to perform its optimum conditions, its best conditions. So here we have a cold environment and a warmer environment. We have the same number of substrate and enzymes on both sides. Let's see what happens. So you can see here the cold in the cold version, the substrates all align with their enzymes and they all get there eventually. So it's not like it doesn't happen. In the warmer one though, you can see it happens at a much faster rate. So the cold one, just to repeat, it still happens and they have to fight find each other and then they collide and they're bound to each other. They would then go off and produce their products as well. But the warmer one here, it's a lot quicker because there's a higher rate of collisions between the substrate and the enzyme. Okay, so up here it might be a bit confusing. It might seem that they find them faster in this uh, animation. It's not that they find them faster. There's just more likelihood of collisions if they're moving faster anyway. And that's what happens in this where you increase the temperature. The problem with raising the temperature too high though is that you can denature the enzyme so that the substrate doesn't fit anymore. So you can see here, this was the picture at the beginning. We have a normal enzyme that's ready to have its substrate here. It's got its active site, so it's specific to a substrate. As you heat it too much, or if you have a pH that isn't optimum, this will denature the enzyme. That's because the bonds inside of the enzyme start to break up. And as the bonds break, this active site is no longer specific, which means that this substrate will not bind to it. And we call this denatured. Yeah, like nature is natural, D is like not, so denatured is unnatural anymore. It's not correct. So you can see here the substrate will not bind to the denatured enzyme, but it will go and bind to the normal one. So you can see this happening in graphs, and this is usually how they're going to present it to you in the exam as well. So they're not very scary as long as you know what's going on. So the one on the left is all to do with temperature. And you can see as the temperature rises, down here at the bottom, temperature in degrees centigrade, so does the rate of the reaction. So it's reaching this optimum point at the top here. Okay, the optimum point where the rate of reaction is the highest. But after that, you can see the rate of reaction starts to decline. And this is as the enzymes are becoming denatured past a certain point. And lo and behold, if you were to extrapolate this, you might find that the temperature at this point is 37 degrees Celsius, which is the same temperature as body temperature. And that is the optimum rate for our enzymes. But as you get feverish, if you get really, really feverish, you'll have to be hospitalized. And that's because your enzymes start to denature above a certain temperature. And it becomes critical if you don't have your enzymes do the jobs for your body. So similarly then with pH, this also happens. So you can reach an optimum pH and a suboptimum pH on either side here where the rate of reaction is lower. So that's it then for the 1.1 unit cells and the movement across cells. Next time we'll be moving on to a new unit called respiration and the respiratory system in humans, which talks us through the structure of the lungs, how we breathe, how we get oxygen into our body and get carbon dioxide out.